Welcome to today's 3D print. Seven of nine has arrived. I still have two more printers that are supposed to be coming to me. This is seven of nine, so I figured we'll do her first. <laughs> I'm missing a piece. Yep, right there. This one was interesting because, um, you know, it came in this. <laughs> They basically toss the whole printer, partially assembled, into a box. So it's, um, yeah, it's kind of all over the place. <laughs> this one's beat up. This one had to be seven, didn't it? Of course, you had to be seven of nine. Uh, I guess you are a, a, a past Borg, so you've got to be rebuilt, huh? Um, they somehow managed to bend the bracket on the Y-axis uh, stepper there. Uh, they used the wrong bolts, definitely. This that, that is not the bolt to be used in there. That's probably why they had a problem with it. They used one of the cap screws to attach the arm to the bracket. Actually, it should have already been assembled. I wonder how they even did that. Um, you're supposed to use one of these because the cap screw is digging into the stupid um, blue stuff that they install on these things. So, that's going away. Boy, I'm going to have a lot of this stuff by the time I'm done. But, um, yeah, that's not how that. It's dragging bad. Yep. So, this one's going to take a little work to put together. Hopefully, all the bits are here. I know I already see wrenches missing. So, I'm going to need to dig into my little extra pile of tools here from all my other printers. But, um, let's see. What is in here? Oh, there is some more screws in here. That's good. That's what the Z-Rod came in. The nippers are here. The scraper's here. Some papers are here. A couple extra screw bits that might come in handy. A zip tie. Two zip ties are left. They never used the filament. I don't know if they gave up before even building it. They had their own roll of filament. Um, three of the wrenches are here, so there's two wrenches missing. The the bigger wrench is missing, so I'm gonna need that since um, these V wheels are like this thing's like all over the place. This it's like what the hell did you do to this printer? <laughs> So I'm going to pause you as I begin to tear this apart, but let me give you a rundown of what I see. First, this needs to be adjusted. It's probably, hopefully, just an adjustment, because that's pretty far out of whack. It looks like they built this right, though it might need to be pushed out more. Um, this is in the right spot, I think. Looks like it got tweaked a little bit. Hopefully, it's electrically intact. They already ran the belt. The belt's attached. The grub screws are there. I already checked the Z-Rod. It does appear to be straight. This looks like it's okay. This is all loose. This is all loose. i got to take it all apart and put it back together again. Um, so I guess the one of the easiest things I can do is get the Z-Rod out of the way. Get this whole entire assembly taken off of here. Since I'm going to need to go through these access holes to put this bugger together again. Since it is missing bolts. Completely missing bolts. This bolt needs to go in here. Oh, and I just dropped it. Okay. Well, I'm going to pause you guys as I assemble this. I'm going to unpause as I do each step. So my first step is going to be to complete this assembly. This needs to be tightened up just a little bit. It's a little loose. Um, this one isn't adjustable, so I don't have to worry about that. But this here, it's missing a bolt, and that's the wrong bolt. So i got to swap out these two bolts. And you have to take this off of here to do it. Looks like I am missing a screw. Wow, that's like backwards? How'd they even do that? Why did they take this apart? It's like this was taken apart and it shouldn't have been. I'm missing a nut and a bolt that holds the end stop, so I might have to temporarily glue that into place for now. I'll have to check my other ones, see if that's how it's assembled on the other ones, but let's get that unplugged for now so that's not in my way. But, um, yeah, they did a a bang up job of wrecking this thing <laughs> but I don't see nothing besides this bracket I don't see nothing that's actually bent so I imagine I should be able to make all of this work although that connector got tweaked a bit I think most of the issues that I'm noticing are from oh that needs, that needs oh that's bent too yeah oh this is gonna be fun I should be able to push that out though does that slide? No, that locks into place, doesn't it? 
Yeah, and it's threaded. Um, this is bent. I gotta straighten that out. So I get a pair of Lyman dikes out and straighten that out. That's bent. Gotta straighten that out. And I suspect most of the bending happened in the. Um, well, it's got white filament, so they did put something through it. I suspect most of the bending happened in the return shipment when they just chucked the whole damn printer in a box, didn't even try to repack it. Inconsiderate people. Do they, do they, do they know what's going to happen when the Borg Queen finds out what they did to 7 of 9? They're just going to open up a transport tunnel right to their house and just... It's assimilation time. I mean, they're screwed. So, I'll be back. Alright. Got the X-arm installed correctly. Um, it was missing the two washers because the correct bolts are actually a hair too long so the bolts will bottom out on the inside of the 10 or the 20 millimeter rail before they tighten so there's two little washers so I just took the two washers that I didn't use when I built the bottom of the CR10 mini so now my next step is to fashion some sort of correction here for this end stop I gotta figure out how to attach that because I'm missing a little nut so hopefully my little goodie box down here has a nut in it I gotta put the second bolt in there guessing that is what this is for but no nut to go with it that's what holds the end stop switch here in place and after that I'll be reassembling the gantry back on here after I tighten up all that down there so we'll go from there all right every single bolt on the bottom was loose I had to tighten them all I am missing one of the primary bolts for here that goes here I don't have any bolts that are compatible, so once I have this all put together, I'm going to take that one out, measure it, and get one to replace that. For now, I think it's good enough. All of the angle brackets were loose. The bed was loose. The bed um, leveling nuts were upside down. A bolt was missing from here. But the bed is now tight, no jiggle. So the bed is ready. This is ready. Um, I'm going to grab another tool so I can bend this bracket and bend that bracket straight again. Those are beefy brackets too. The how they bent that. I'm guessing it was bent because it was rattled around inside of a box where this was just literally chucked into a box. And <laughs> they said, "We're returning it. I don't care." <laughs> but I guess they didn't even bother watching the video or anything. That's one reason they should include instructions with this. Because you get you sell a $200 printer. The problem is not the printer. The problem is the user. The, what's going to happen is you're going to get people who normally wouldn't buy a 3D printer biting the bullet on a 3D printer because it's $200 and then they get it and realize that they actually have to do something <laughs> yeah that's when bad things happen so hopefully nothing's catastrophic and I can bring her back to life we shall see I shall keep working alright I got this put on this has a tiny bit of play in it now you can see it's wobbling a little bit there and the problem is, this isn't adjustable. This was never intended for this to be adjustable on this because it's fixed. Um, so I think it got tweaked. And I don't think there's anything I can do about it since it's not adjustable. So I'm going to have to live with that little bit of play right there. And the only thing that bothers me is that play also translates to front and back play. So we'll have to see what it does when I print with it. I might have to... Um, I might have to um, eccentricize the holes for one of the wheels so that I can shift it over and force it to tighten up. Probably this one right here since I can access both sides without tearing the whole thing apart. So um, elongate two of the holes here so that I can shift this and tighten up this gantry or maybe it won't be an issue. We shall see. Got the top installed, the zero installed, tightened up. Everything's wired up. Put the spool holder in place. The wiring looks okay. A couple of plugs look like they got tweaked, but they don't look like they got destroyed. Might as well use the sample it comes with to try it out. Let's find the front. Right there. There we go. Got it. Let's see if it'll even feed. <laughs> I guess I gotta flatten that out a little bit so I can get it in there. There we go. 
go. Okay. Power supply lit up. Let's see what happens when I turn it on. Turns on. Good start. Although I guess it would help if I installed this, wouldn't it? And I am getting readings from both thermistors. Oh, what's this, this way? Does this go? It goes on the back side. And that is these two here, which I don't need the washers. Pause you again while I install this. Well, it's working. Here's the little Marvin I printed. I don't know if you can see that. And now I'm printing a Benchy at 150% speed. So, give a little um, stress test. See how it goes, but so far so good. I'm still concerned about this being a little wobbly, but it doesn't appear to be affecting the prints, um, especially with the jerk turned down. Um, what I could do to fix that is I could take out this one wheel, um, widen the hole a little bit so it's a oval instead of a circle and then I can that'll allow me to shim the wheel over a little bit which will tighten it up ideally you want to do this one here so that because adjusting this one will change the level of the arm but you can just adjust the bed level to compensate for that it's a lot easier to change that one especially since um, you can't change this one once you assemble it this one you can change it after it's assembled so that would be the better one to mess with since you can modify it after the fact but yeah, working great. Actually, this black filament, it's like a charcoal colored filament that the printer came with. It's actually a pretty nice filament. I like it. Nice clean Marvin. I'll have better pictures during my next Mega Printer so I'll show off some of these prints. Well, it works good. Seven of nine is fully functional. There's a little Marvin. I think I showed you guys that already. And. A nice, smooth little benchy. The filament they use for this is actually kind of nice. All right, just enough to print one Marvin and a benchy, and I got that much left. So not much of a sample filament, but hmm, it's free. But yeah, not bad. I like the silver. It's like a charcoal, like a silver smoke charcoal. So doubt gonna build a Tebow tornado. <laughs>